This video is about regression lines, but first let's quickly talk about independent and dependent variables. The way I remember it is it's like cause and effect. So the independent variable is the cause and the dependent variable is the effect. The independent variable goes along the x-axis and it's usually things like time. So that's the cause of things to happen. So over time, uh, your height might go up. Or over time, the plant might grow taller. The dependent variable is the, th the effect that this has. That's plotted on the y-axis, and that might be the length of the plant, for example. That's not, that doesn't cause time to change. It's time on the x, which causes the length to change on the y. Now, what about regression lines? Just quickly, the word regression means going back to something or going backwards. So sometimes you might get results which seem crazy, but over time, results tend to gravitate tend to go towards the mean. You could call it the line of regression. So that's what a regression line is. It's like the basic expected line and you might get results on either side of it but over time overall the results will follow that regression pattern. How do you work out a regression line? Well the good thing to know about this is that to work it out you simply turn to the formula booklet which will have all the answers to all of life's problems including regression lines. What is the equation of the regression line? It's y equals a plus bx. Well, you know what y and x are. That's, you know, everyone knows how to draw a graph. You know, they've got the y axis and the x axis. But what is a and b? Well, first thing you do is work out b. You need to work out b first. And that's using something we did in an early video sxy divided by sxx. And we know the formulas for those. If you're not sure about how to work it out, look at my previous video. Once you've got b, you can then work out a using the mean of y, take away b, which you've just worked out, times the mean of x. Sounds complicated, but it's actually quite a doddle, especially compared to, for example, the product moment correlation coefficient. Let's do an example. Results from an experiment in which different masses were placed on a spring and the resulting length of the spring measured are shown below. So here, by the way, the mass would be the independent variable. That's the thing causing the change and the effect would be the changing length of the spring. Calculate SXX and SXY. Well, again, that was done in a previous video, but you would simply use the data they've given to you. So for example here, the sum of X squared, this is for SXX, is 22,000. Again, look how much data they've given you, saving you so much time. Take away the sum of X squared divided by N. And how do we know the N? Well, there's five bits of data in each row, so we know n is five. That gives you 400. What about s, x, y? Well, again, they've given you most of the data you need. We know the sum of x, y is this, 18,238. Take away the sum of x times the sum of y, which they've given you, divided by n, again, which is five. If you work that out on the calculator, being very careful when you're typing in the calculator, Probably the number one cause of lost marks for regression lines is simply uh, poor use of the calculator. So be very careful you're doing your fractions correctly, remembering the minuses, etc. And that's 922. Putting that into the formula that they give you in the formula sheet, you get 922 divided by 4000. So B is 0 0.2305. With that B, which we've just worked out, we can then work out A by timesing B by the mean of x, which thankfully they've given to us. If they hadn't given it to us, we'd have to add it all up and divide by five. To finish that off, a equals the mean of y, take away the answer we just worked out, which is 57.72, the mean of y, take away that answer, which is 43.89. We finally put our a and b into our equation up here, y equals a plus bx, and we have our regression line. The final cool aspect of regression lines is when they ask you about interpolation and extrapolation. And this is really relevant for real life. So what data should we use and when should we use it? Well, here's the definitions. I'll just paste in here. So we have, let's just put it over here. Interpolation is when we're estimating the value of a dependent variable within the range of the data. So for example, if I was asking you, if I put a mass of 50, what length should I expect? That would be interpolation. 
because I asked you about 50, which is right in the middle of the range. Well, at least it's within the range. It's somewhere between 20 and 100. So it's quite reasonable to use this regression line and try and work out what Y would be. That would be interpolation. So in real life, you, you know, that's A-OK. -okay. Extrapolation, on the other hand, comes from outside the poles. Extrapolation. Extrapolation. And that's when, I, if I asked you something like, if I put a mass of 200, what would the length be? The problem with that is it's outside this range of 20 to 100, and we don't know for sure this pattern will keep on going all the way up to that. Maybe the spring will break, for example. So you shouldn't extrapolate, or at least it's way less reliable to extrapolate data. So that's when you estimate a value outside the range of the data and the values estimated can be unreliable and that's a life lesson as well the fact that just because a certain amount of data is showing you one thing doesn't mean you can extrapolate all the way out and draw all sorts of crazy conclusions